Hello, I'm uh, Jack Rickard. This is my uh, partner in crime, Brian Noto. We've done a series of videos about our Porsche Speedster conversion to electric drive. It's uh, worked out pretty well. Um, in fact, I've, I've been delighted with the car and driving it pretty much uh, everywhere, every day. Uh, the gas and the Escalade sitting there going bad. Um, but it's uh, done well enough, we've kind of had an idea for an upgrade. The system that we had originally set up, what we'd planned was a series of uh, 10 um, batteries of uh, 160 amp hours. They were physically large enough that their granularity, we couldn't fit them in the car. Every way we turned it, you know, we missed by about a 32nd of an inch. Mm -hmm. So we went to the smaller uh, batteries. The, uh, why don't you grab one there, Brian? These are 90 amp hour lithium ions. And instead of 10, we got 16 of them in the car. Uh, they're simply physically smaller. Um, so we put them in two banks of eight each, and that gave us 180 amp hour uh, wide for the current capability, but we were running a nominal voltage of about 105 volts. That posed a couple of problems. Um, not bad ones, but uh, significant. The biggest one was our DC to DC power converter. Um, do we have that iota? Have we pulled that out yet? Yeah, pulled out, yeah. Where is that? Go Grab it. The uh, DC to DC converter takes our pack voltage, in this case 105 volts, and converts it to the 12 volts, uh, a little less than 13, uh, that we use for our tail lights and our headlights, stereo system, the normal electrical apparatchik of the, of the car. Uh, we had used this IOTA DLS 55, and the problem is that it's really designed for a little higher voltage. Um, but opening it up and looking inside, I was a little underwhelmed with the design. It will put out 55 amps, unfortunately, at uh, even up to 120 volts. Um, it drops to about an 8 volt output. They're selling these for a couple hundred dollars. It's probably the most common uh, DC to DC converter used because it's inexpensive. Um, I'm, after using it and trying it and testing it on some of our lab equipment where I watched it drop to eight volts uh, at 50 amps with uh, perfect input, um, I'm underwhelmed. I don't want it in a car. So we've built another one out of Vicor modules, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but it would still be nice to get our pack voltage up a little higher. Our heater would work better. Our DC to DC converter would work better. Uh, we get a little higher RPM on the motor. Mm -hmm. um, it, we would uh, have more range if we could add more batteries. The engine compartment has been pretty nice the way we had it laid out we could get to everything uh, fortunately we haven't had to get to very much uh, the cars run um, remarkably well and and we really haven't Nothing. had to other than the dc to dc converter um, and there is a little room in there and uh, what you'll find in doing an electric cars anytime you have a little bit you need a little bit more um, but you'll find something to stuff in it these batteries at 90 amp hours, and they're testing out about 100 amp hours actually on the bench um, at uh, oh, nominally 13 and a half volts uh, for the four cell bank. Um, that's given us about 1,350 watts. And we do about 240 or 250 watts a mile. That means there's five miles of range in that battery. Uh, if I could add two of them, I'd get another 10 miles. we go from a 75-mile range to an 85-mile range. Probably get a little better acceleration, a little higher 
top speed and um, and all our associated equipment, our heater and our DC to DC converter will work a little better. The problem, of course, is finding the space for them and then mounting them securely where they're not going to uh, bounce around or if we're in a wreck or something, we don't want them crashing into metal and, and uh, shorting things out. So we've got a little bit of rewiring to do, but the big issue is uh, um, the space and the mounting. And we've come up with something that's going to look bizarre. Um, in fact, I think it looks kind of unprofessional, but actually it's probably the best solution for a number of reasons. Um, so I'm going to show you in the engine compartment here, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing. This is two um, um, sort of plastic washers that they use for brake airlines on big trucks. And I've epoxied that together. These are our existing batteries, and we like having access to them. The only place I can get batteries is on this side and on this side because of the slope of my hood here um, and we don't want the hood to get into it. So we need to build some sort of a platform on top of the existing batteries where we can mount another set of batteries or two of them um, without shorting any of the terminals and so forth. So these are our little bumpers I'm going to put these on top of some of the terminals. Here they're, you know, just slip them over. They're about the right diameter on the inside to go over our terminal bolts. And we're going to use those to support some platforms to go over this. This is our DC to DC converter. It's kind of homemade. I've got a switch here and a light uh, heat sink. And we made it out of uh, Vicor. DC to the DC converters are solid state devices that do a pretty good job coming a variety of um, uh, voltage ranges and I'll uh, show you what the inside of one of my homemade devices here looks like. They're not very complicated because most of the electronics are in these little Vicor bricks. Uh, this is called high molecular weight polyethylene uh, HMWP. Um, the trade name is Tyvar. It's like, uh, well, it's a little bit like uh, what you might be familiar with Teflon, but it's a white uh, plastic material with a very high dielectric strength, and so it doesn't conduct electricity. I've made a little cap for this battery box out of this uh, Tyvar, and then drilled a couple of holes and added these. Uh, nylon zip ties to hold the battery in place for our motor. Room is the problem and the opportunity here. So, what we're going to have is a set of zip ties that hold the battery to the uh, tie bar and then another set that holds both the battery and the tie bar down on top of the box and uh, these have very high tensile strength they're non-conducting and they're quite heat resistant the tie bar. we've um, rerouted our cables a little bit here let us add one to the positive end of our rear pack and on that side we're going to mount one to the negative end of our front pack and we've already done some cables to uh, to affect that. 